Automatically measuring and blending additives in plastic resins has become a necessity. The cost of resins and their additives has risen so much that their loss due to manual blending has made the automization of this process a viable option. Did you know that the cost of automization could be repaid in less than a year? Yes, the cost of labor, along with multiple disadvantages and deficiencies that come with manual blending, makes automization a necessity. Some of these disadvantages are in just months, manually mixing a virgin resin with more than 0.5% of pelletized colorant could cost you more than the price of an additive feeder. Manually mixed materials means an increase in storage costs. Losses occur due to resin contamination during manual mixing. Manual blending occupies more space on the production floor, etc. In this lesson, we will discuss additive feeders. Gravimetric blenders, system configurations, pneumatic proportional valves, additive feeders. This type of blending occurs in the throat of the extruder. Let's look at the parts of an additive feeder. The hopper full of additive, the motor, and the feeder. The most popular design includes a feeder screw called an auger. The auger rotates directly feeding the proper amount of additive to the flow of resin. This is also known as volumetric feeding. The uncolored resin flows by means of gravity. The blender is installed between the hopper loader and the extruder's throat. The amount blended is determined by the auger's revolutions per minute, or RPM, and is adjusted for each particular process. What proportions are such a blender capable of? This depends upon the type of material that is being added. For example, additive colorant amounts can fluctuate in between 0.25 and 6%. It is important to properly size your equipment. What information is needed to determine that the equipment is properly sized? The process's total consumption in kilograms per hour or in pounds per hour. Types of materials. Does the material flow or clump? The additives, proportions. Type of feeding, continuous or periodic. Continuous feeding is usually used for extrusion processes and periodic feeding for injection molding. Isn't continuous and periodic feeding done with the same type of equipment? Yes, it is the same, but the operation is somewhat different. Continuous feeding will constantly feed an additive into the process while periodic feeding only adds it during plastification or recovery. Remember that extrusion equipment continuously rotates, while injection equipment only rotates during the recovery or feeding stage. The rest of the time, the equipment acts as an injection piston. In the animation, note that the auger rotates during recovery and not during injection. Determining the consumption rate of periodic feeding is somewhat distinct. Let's look at a couple of exercises. Calculating continuous feeding consumption. Think of an application in which colorant will be added in the amount of 2.5% to an extrusion process using one kilogram of material per minute. Total consumption is one kilogram per minute or 60 kilograms per hour or 132 pounds per hour. Therefore, feeding consumption will be total consumption times feeding rate which is equal to 60 kilograms per hour times 0.025. This is equal to 1.5 kilograms per hour, or 3.3 pounds per hour. Calculating periodic feeding consumption. Think of an injection molding application that needs to be colored at a rate of 2.5%. The total injection weight, parts plus runner, is 0.12 kilograms, and recovery lasts three seconds. Remember that feeding occurs during the recovery period. Recovery consumption equals injection weight divided by recovery time. This is equal to 0.12 kilograms divided by 3 seconds, or 0.04 kilograms per second, which is also equal to 144 kilograms per hour, or 317 pounds per hour. Therefore, feeding consumption will be total consumption times feeding rate. This is equal to 144 kilograms per hour times 0.025 
or 3.6 kilograms per hour, which is also equal to 7.9 pounds per hour. Though it seems simple, it is common to see an hourly resin consumption rate used to specify an injection molding's additive feeders, which is not correct. It is imperative that the proper calculations are done before purchasing a feeder. Can one feeder be used for different feeding applications? Normally, yes. However, if the feeding proportion is too distinct, it may be necessary to have augers with different diameters. This equipment is normally manufactured so that the auger can be quickly changed. How do you adjust the proportions on this type of equipment? The equipment provides a way to take samples. The idea is to take material samples at distinct feeding speeds and define times, then weigh them and calculate. Feeding is equal to weight of sample divided by feeding time. The easiest way is to create a graph of speed adjustments versus feeding and use it to determine the feeding adjustments for a specific colorant. This graph should be periodically verified since the colorant's pellet size could change with time. Remember to make a calibration table for each type of colorant. How precise is this type of equipment? It is exact up to two tenths of a percent. For better precision, you should consider gravimetric measuring and blending systems. Can I feed more than one ingredient at a time? Sure. More than one additive feeder can be attached to a single system. For example, one to blend in pigment and another to blend in regrind. Now feeding three or more additives is usually accomplished with gravimetric blending systems. Why is it necessary to know if the material I'm going to add in flows freely or if it clumps? There are materials that do not flow well and need to be used with special feeding equipment. For example, a very lightweight regrind may need an agitator to help it flow. Consult your equipment supplier or send them a sample of your material if you know that your material doesn't flow easily. Gravimetric blenders. These systems are known for their ability to weigh the ingredients. This makes them more precise and can include multiple functions, such as weighing ingredients, mixing, programmable recipes, inventory control, and adding multiple ingredients. What type of application requires more than three ingredients? Products that require multiple mechanical properties. The amount of additives that may need to be measured and mixed can vary and can contain any combination of the following. Virgin, regrind, recycled, colorant, softeners, clarifiers, lubricants, fibers, etc. A gravimetric system is normally composed of material hoppers, feeder systems, weighing scale, mixing chamber, and discharge outlet. How do they work? Though each operation will vary according to manufacturer, they conceptually function in the same fashion. Each hopper is full of one ingredient, such as virgin, regrind, or granulated colorant. The ingredients are alternately fed into the weighing scale by means of a slide gate or an auger. Once the proper proportions have been weighed, they will be discharged into the mixing chamber. After being mixed, the blended material will be dumped through the discharge outlet to later be processed. What information is required to determine the proper equipment needed? Total material consumption in kilograms per hour or in pounds per hour. Type of materials. Each additive's proportion. And if the materials flow freely or clump. Are there granulated color and additive feeders that work gravimetrically? Yes, they do exist, but they are more expensive than volumetric additive feeders. In order to add granulated colorant, is it recommendable to use direct volumetric feed or gravimetric feed? That depends upon the application. For example, if you are mixing multiple ingredients and at least one of these is a colorant, consider working with gravimetric feeders. That way, you will obtain a precise measurement of each ingredient. If the only additive is colorant, you can work with a volumetric feeder. However, if the application requires an additive precision of better than 0.2%, consider a gravimetric feeder. Example, think of an application in which three ingredients, virgin, regrind, and colorant, are mixed in a proportion of 77.5%, 20%, and 2.5% respectively. In an extrusion process of one kilogram per minute, total consumption is one kilogram per minute which is equal to 60 kilograms per hour or 132 pounds per hour. Therefore, 
the additive consumption of each ingredient will be virgin is equal to 60 kilograms per hour times 0.775, which is equal to 46.5 kilograms per hour or 102.51 pounds per hour. Regrind is equal to 60 kilograms per hour times 0.2. This is equal to 12 kilograms per hour or 26.46 pounds per hour. And colorant is equal to 60 kilograms per hour times 0.025, which is equal to 1.5 kilograms per hour or 3.3 pounds per hour. Is it necessary to make these calculations before adjusting a gravimetric blender? Not necessarily. Modern equipment requires the data in percentages. For example, virgin, 77.5%, regrind, 20%, colorant, 2.5%. The equipment will do the calculations for you. Now, if you're purchasing new equipment, those calculations are necessary to configure it. Talk with your equipment supplier. They can do the calculations for you. Why is it necessary to know if the material I'm going to add in flows freely or if it clumps? There are materials that do not flow well and need to be used with special blending equipment. As mentioned before, consult your equipment supplier or send them a sample of your material if you know that your material doesn't flow easily. As mentioned before, consult your equipment supplier or send them a sample of your material if you know that your material doesn't flow easily. System configurations. Central blending system. This type of system is shared by various processes that use distinct recipes. Its major advantages are automatic blending by means of predetermined recipes, blending precision, since these are usually gravimetric systems. These systems normally come with inventory control for consumed ingredients. Its major disadvantage is that the blended product requires more handling and storage. Blender above the extruder. This blender is dedicated to one extruder and is installed above the extruder's throat. The objective of this configuration is to add and blend materials for immediate process consumption. Its major advantages are elimination of the premixing of resins, reduction in resin storage, multiple recipes memory, inventory control for each station, reduction in the possibility of contamination, and drastic reduction in labor costs since the ingredients are automatically conveyed to the blender. Its biggest disadvantage is that capital investment in this type of equipment is more costly than a central system. Remote blender. This type of additive feeder can be dedicated or can be shared by more than one process. Besides the advantages that a blender above the extruder has, this also includes easy maintenance since blending is remote and not above the machine and blending that is not necessarily dedicated to only one process. Its major disadvantage is that it occupies more space than the blender above the extruder. Let's review. Pneumatic proportional valves. The simplest mixer is a pneumatic proportional valve. It is mainly used to mix virgin with regrind where there can be up to 5% acceptable variations in proportion. These function by means of valves with rubber plungers that control the suction of one material at a time. The proportional valve is mounted on a hopper loader. While the hopper suctions the material, the valves proportionally control the amount of material that enters the hopper loader. This is done by means of pneumatic cylinders that control whether or not the plungers are open. Let's look at an animation demonstrating its operation. Timers are used in order to achieve the proper proportions. Total suction time, time for material A, time for material B. For example, imagine a mixture of materials A and B in proportions of 30% and 70% respectively in a vacuum that is adjusted to suction for 40 seconds. The times that can work, time for material A would be 3 seconds, time for material B would be 7 seconds. Properly adjusted, this will create eight alternating layers between materials A and B, in which the proportion of B will be greater than that of A. The advantages of a proportional valve are, they are economical and they are easy to install. Their major disadvantage is that they are not proportionally precise. Can proportional valves be used to blend granulated colorant? 
Unfortunately not. These do not offer the precision that adding colorant demands. Before automating your blending process, consult a specialist in automated measuring and blending systems.